Hello and welcome to part two of the pouch project. Now I thought about how to show it to you and my conclusion was um, make the first one, make all the mistakes, uh, gather my uh, thoughts and observations on uh, how it went and then maybe show you in detail the second pouch. So uh, here is pouch number one. Uh, that's the only thing that's missing are the rivets that reinforce the uh, tabs here and on the back there will be a another riveted part this little d-ring holder which will go here so uh, those should arrive day after tomorrow and this will be finished so this one looks good and from a reasonable distance nothing to complain about however um, I was a bit of a loss this on the, this one about how to finish off the um, the stitch lines uh, I sort of looped them round a couple of times tied some knots so I wasn't really sure how to how to do that but someone has uh, helped me online and uh, I now know what to do so this will be a lot tidier in number two um, also, well, I'll show you maybe as I go along what I'll do now and what I did in the other one, which maybe didn't work out so well. But um, it's been a very interesting project. It's actually very therapeutic to to do this stuff. Once you get uh, once you get into the flow of stitching, it sort of becomes automatic, and uh, you get along quite quickly without realizing it. So um, let's start with the beginning. So the basic things I won't show you. Um, obviously I had a piece of leather, I uh, cut out the pattern, put it onto some card and uh, used a uh, scribing tool to just to scratch the shapes in the leather, cut them out using a standing knife or uh, what do you call them, exacto knives. So I won't show you that. Um, it worked. I still got all 12 fingers. So uh, that's all well and good. Now I've used three millimeter thick leather for everything except for the uh, bellows on the side of the pouch, which need to be more flexible, of course. Now the next thing was to scribe out the stitch lines so that when I make the holes it's all nice and regular at a sat distance from the edges or uh, double stitch lines if uh, for some parts um, there's some special tools for that um, but that's money and we're cheap or should I say economical that's broken arrange so all I did was uh, steal my son's compass set and um, set the distance that I wanted between the two points and then uh, using the leather, we got a spare bit there I'm going to do then set the whatever that is, I can't remember what it is, but ink I think anyway, set that on the edge and there you go, instant lines that follow the edge of your piece of leather. So that didn't need any expense or expertise, so that was good. Now next thing which I do really recommend as an essential tool is a set of these, um, I don't know what they're called, pronged punches, something like that. Anyway, they are used for pre-punching pre the leather in preparation for stitching and they can come you can get them with different separation lengths between the prongs uh, I've chosen three millimeter um, looking at the original pattern and for example the Swiss ammo pouches I probably could have gone with four maybe even five millimeter separation but no never mind just means I'm doing twice as much stitching um, but for example the, uh, you know, if I was using these a lot, this line, for example, is has weakened it a little. 
but I'm not going to be using these much, so I don't think it'll be an issue. So maybe next time, get a wider spacing. For the other, for the rest of the pouch, I don't think it's a problem, but for this one, maybe uh, next time I should get maybe a five or a four. But anyway, that's these are quite easy to use. You, uh, oh yes, make sure you're on something soft on the back, and then you put on the put on your stitch line. Tap it in, nice and deep. It doesn't you need something soft because it's going to go through the other side, like that. Put that out, and there you go. So you go all along your stitch lines, all the way around, and it really makes things easier because then the uh, the all will go through with the uh, ease. Even when you've got uh, two, three, uh, or in this case, even four layers of leather to go through. And speaking of the awl, this is it. Now I uh, first got another one which looks the same, which had a very. This, I've got a, a spike on this one because I'm using it as a to persuade the thread through now and again or unpick when I made a mistake. But it had a very thin needle. Um, and a very thin thread, but I thought, no, of course I bought this and it's, it's bound to be suitable for what it says in the box. Was it bollocks? Um, the thread kept on snapping uh, when I gave it, you know, because you have to give it a good tug now and again, and however you want to take that, it's never a good idea for things to snap when you're tugging. So, um, I got a replacement. I First then I got this linen thread, which is the one I use for tying Shaspo cartridge, which I know is pretty good intention. It's more likely to cut through your skin than snap. But um, that would still snap under tension. And I think part of that is because you, when you're shoving it through leather, you've got quite a lot of friction. And um, that was separating the threads, the linen fibres in here, and that was no good. So... I went to a convenient leather shop on the way back from work and they gave me this, which is a far chunkier tool. The rest of it is the same. It's got, you've got the bobbin and a hollow handle for spares and things, but the needle here is really rather thick and it's perfect. I've done the other pouch and it's uh, obviously not snapped. Oh yes, that was the other thing. Uh, the other needle snapped. And I noticed that the needles were very similar to the ones on sewing machines, so I ran upstairs, stole the one from the sewing machine, and that went better, but snapped as well. But this is about twice the thickness of a sewing, a normal sewing needle thread. The tip is also uh, focus polygonal, so it can uh, it can cut a little bit through uh, the leather, and you can twist it when you go in when it's uh, getting a bit stubborn. And it has, on the back of the needle, as you can see there, it has a channel. So the thread comes off the bobbin. And goes through the hole, like so. And when you force it through, you get a scrap piece of leather. Now, there's loads of videos on, the, on how to use these. So when you force it through, Try not force it through my finger. There, you see the thread is goes automatically into the uh, channel, and uh, so it's out of harm's way. It doesn't get rubbed against by the leather, and likewise when you pull it back. Now the way this works is uh, you pull it back, and it should do this. And in the first stitch, you pull through. The thread and then you uh, you back out and you go to your next hole force it through and then you back it out a little bit and this will have this is what normally happens uh, the side opposite to the slot will bow out and then you uh, thread 
your needle through, your thread through, and then you pull part of the way. There you go, and you've got your cross stitch. And what sometimes happens, and I'll just push it back. No, it doesn't want to. Okay, let's do another one. What sometimes happens, and I didn't see this explained in, uh, it wasn't in instructions for the tool or on the videos I saw. Sometimes it, op it displays both sides, like this. And then you inadvertently put it on the side of the channel. And when you do that, you got this horrible loop. Um, and that's easy. Once, once you realise you do that, uh, all you've got to do is uh, pull back on the top thread until everything comes out the top and you just back out. Pull that th thread out, out of the loop, pull it through and start again. So that got me puzzled the first few times until I realised that there was there was a side you had to loop it through. It wasn't uh, just any any loop will do. No, you have to put it on the side which is opposite to the channel on the shaft of the needle. Once you do that, you just happily go on your way along the stitch. And one of the things I constantly did in the first pouch was underestimate how much thread to push through to pull through on the first one, on the, your first starting stitch to do the backside of the surface and that results in having to do knots halfway along extensions and things like that and I think the easy rule of thumb was basically three times the distance of the stitch um, because and then you've got more than enough doesn't matter if you cut some off and it took that pouch first pouch took more or less I think sort of 18 meters of, of uh, wax thread Oh yes, that was another thing. The thread I got at the leather shop is a uh, nice thick thread, which is also waxed. So also very good when you're poking it through um, loops because it keeps its shape. And uh, again, this one you can pull on as much as you like. It's never going to snap. So that is basically all the tools I needed. Obviously you need a hammer for the punch. Uh, if when you're going to be doing holes for the rivets, one of these is good. Uh, punch for belts, and that's pretty much it. The uh, you know, the rivets, well, you just need a hard surface and a hammer. Um, so yeah, now all that remains for me to do is uh, finish off punching the stitch lines. And then I'll get on with it. Now, one of the the first thing I did following the instructions on the website, which you will find in the link, is that they started by stitching this part, which is the the bellows. I want to call them that first. So they're stitched here, and then they go on to do the. Uh, flaps for the cover, which are like so, there and there, whoops, the problem I found with that is that this, once it's sewn in place, this interferes when doing the stitching along there, and if you're having to do supplemental uh, punching for fitting the back straps, the belt straps, belt loops, I'll get there, belt loops, you end up punching into this because it flips into the way and all that. So I think what I'll do is actually do all of the back first. So stitch the, uh, well, I don't know. stitch these on, and then the belt loops. So that would be like so, like so, and this, which then this one, this one's a fun one because it has to 
carry this buckle and I'm going to remember this time that the prong here goes on backwards because I'm actually sewing the back which I forgot on the other one and put it this way around which means it's backwards when you put the pouch on because I'm an idiot so uh, on the other one I ground off the prong and I shall make a new one in the right direction. This one is quite amusing because it's looped around, something like that, which is a bit of a, a bit of a challenge to sew. But uh, I found a way to do that. So there we have it. It's not difficult. It does take time, but um, it all basically you have to plan ahead and make sure you do everything in logical steps, which I found. And when I'm doing this, I have uh, the uh, six P's that come to mind, which were used frequently by uh, two RAF officers from university days, where I used to team up regularly for experiments. And that was perfect planning prevents piss poor performance. And uh, it's true. Just go slow, sew the parts sequentially, and um, you probably just work out just fine. Now this is pretty simple, there's no shaping of the leather to be done, uh, it's all flat edges, uh, no moulding, so yeah, it's. I think anybody can do it. Anyway, I shall get on with it and probably show you a little bit how I go. I'm not going to do one of these really horrible nasty things I see on YouTube of great craftsmen that do wonderful things, but all their videos are is 10 minutes of three days work on fast forward. It really hates, I really hate that and it would be hypocritical of me to do the same. So uh, I'll maybe put a little package together of uh, my work as I go along. So I've been industriously punching away and it's all done for now. So the next bit I have done is sewn on the fiddly bits of the tabs. There. And this extra one, which is the connecting tab for connecting the two pouches together. So this one has a stud. So this one will then connect over. So you could wear this effectively across the stomach and the two pouches won't separate, which would then cause your straps to separate, which would be a bad thing. So there's just a little tab that goes on over there. So the next thing will be to overlay the flaps and sew them into place, which would be a bit fiddly on this side because I've got to sandwich that tab between the two layers, but uh, we'll get there slowly and surely. But that will be for tomorrow because what I've got left of thread is not going to cut it. So the back is now completely done, and the straps, buckle, now in place. My rivets have arrived, so uh, all the tabs are now securely riveted in place. Tab is also stitched in, and uh, that will be finished off with the vertical line as well once I do the uh, bellows, which I'm going to start stitching in the middle, and then loop round. So uh, I'll go and punch it out and then uh, get on with it. So we're almost there. Today while everyone went out to enjoy their lunch break in the sunshine and uh, trying out nice restaurants, I was uh, in my office sewing away but uh, good job done, and all remains now to be done I is to sew the fronts on, and then we are almost, almost there. All that remains will then be to fix these two rings on the back of each pouch, and then we are done. So, I have uh, got myself a small bottle of homebrew, I will go and sit in my rocking chair, put on War and Peace audiobook, and uh, crack on with it. 
Ma brook s'en va en guerre, Miroton, Miroton, Mirontaine. Ma brook s'en va en guerre, qui sait quand il reviendra. Right there, this is the last stitch. It's all completed now. All I've got to do is tie off the loose ends. And uh, then we'll have a little comparison between the two pouches. And then I'll get the uh, rig on and see how it uh, looks. So ladies and gents, here they are. And uh, if you'll permit me a little smugness, I'm actually very pleased with the, how they've turned out. This one is the first one I did and you can tell because there's all sorts of weird looping and tying random knots uh, in uh, inconvenient places because I hadn't got the faintest idea of how to finish them off properly. Uh, in there you can see as well. But uh, yeah, otherwise it's all good. I finally fixed this swivel on the on the back. I had to botch some kind of a double screw rivet thing because the normal rivets for leather work are too short. You've got to go through over a centimeter of of, of leather on the other side. Uh, maybe there's some saddlers fittings that would do, but um, I botched something together and uh, it works. And I fire blued it to make it a little bit less obvious that it's a... Uh, well I filed it, filed the screw down first and fire blued it and then it's a, a little less obvious. I've kept the screw there just in case I need to ever dismantle it and uh, lock tight it in. So and this is the second one. You can see the stitching much neater there's no sign of any knots and uh, what I've done as a giveaway here is uh, on recommendation of uh, one of our followers on Facebook was basically to not cross stitch the last hole uh, poke the thread through into the middle section on each side do your knot in there, so it's tucked away in the middle, unseen, and then this loose thread you can uh, back stitch in through the uh, the previous stitches, like I've, you can see here a bit. And there, so that means everything's tucked away, um, and yes, it, it's much much neater. And here's one that's a, these ones I just tucked in underneath. This one just poked out again. There we go. So the distance here is set for the standard French infantry belt, which didn't change from World War One. This is a this is a family piece, which I still wear today. And uh, that goes fits perfectly in those loops. And I'll do that in a second. And they're all um, the patches, the uh, pouches, the individual pouch sections are a bit wonky. Uh, that's because, uh, and this is probably a beginner's error, the, the back follows a square, roughly square profile, especially in the corner here underneath, underneath the loop and then round it. And the front of the pouch doesn't exactly match that profile. So there's a bit of a misalignment when it comes to the corners and that builds up a bit and you get a, a, a slight twist. I expect this will go away A when it's filled and B once these bellows get a bit a bit, uh, bit looser with time. It doesn't actually uh, hinder when you're wearing it and they, uh, because the, the, two pat the two sections go around your waist and, uh, and straighten up anyway. But uh, when I was finished, I was a bit puzzled as to why it was doing this one's a bit more pronounced. So here they are on my yet to be completed uniform rig. Uh, they fit perfectly as intended. 
joined up in the middle just above the belt buckle and uh, we'll have a closer look at uh, what they look like in a minute. Um, I did tell you a fib or a uh, untruth in the intro video. These straps in fact don't hook onto the buckle, they go in like a belt and uh, then the backpack has clips which will clip into the D sections on the top so that they can uh, move and they're free to move about. Um, it was the first pattern, the World War I big boxes that, uh, that had loops that would hook in to these leather straps. So uh, this is what it looks like at the back. You can see one of the D rings here is used for this sack and the other one here somewhere there would be for the water bottle that would hang underneath between the bottom of the pouch here and the ring. And I've probably got these the wrong way around, but my excuse is I'm left-handed. So, uh, and they would be filled, obviously, depending on what you're uh, armed with. Either a uh, M16 carbine or rifle. This one, not that one. Uh, or a uh, Mass 36. Or, if you're the Grenadier, a Lebel. So here's a close-up of the uh, buckle arrangement. So the uh, clip from the top rucksack would clip into this D section on the top. And uh, you can see both pouches are held together with the stud there. So they stay in place. Also, the coat has on each side a leather reinforced loop that carries some of the weight of the rig. Now as to capacity, you've got, uh, if you are armed with a variety of M16 Berthier, you would have 30 rounds at your disposal per pouch. And if you were armed with an M16, sorry, Mass 36, getting confused here, you would have 45 rounds of uh, 7.5 French, so a reasonable increase in capacity there. So here we are at the end of the project. I hope uh, you learned something. I certainly did. Um, discovered a new skill, which I'm sure will be useful for making other difficult to get hold of stuff. Um, by the way, if you want the pattern for this, uh, do let me know. Uh, easiest via Facebook or contact bloke. And I'll try and get the uh, A4 printout sheets for the pattern. Um, I don't think the original owner would be too happy with me putting him into public domain, otherwise you probably would have already done so. Anyway, um, thank you for watching, thank you for your patience, it's been, uh, it's been long, I know. And uh, like and subscribe on Facebook and on YouTube, and see you again next time.